Hi, welcome to our presentation, Staging and Photo Styling the Big Picture. I'm Karen Otto. And I'm Lance Selgo, and we're both from Dallas in the real estate industry, and we have some fun things that we want to share with you. I'm Karen Otto. I'm with Homestar Staging. I'm located in Plano, Texas. I've been staging in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex since 2006. I'd love to connect with you on social media, and all of my handles on social media are at Homestar Staging. I'm Lance Selgo, and I am a real estate photographer, so I take only pictures of houses that are for sale for agents. I don't take any portraits or any family pictures, that type of thing. Uh, I'm also located in the Dallas area on the south side of the Metroplex. Been a real estate photographer since 2010, and you can reach me with the handle at Lance UEP. So the big picture, let's take a look at what we're going to talk about. We are going to talk about your brand, what your business looks like to potential customers who are looking in. We're going to talk about some photo styling tips. What are some things that you can do as a stager or as a realtor to get your property ready for picture day? And then finally, we'll go over some best practices. What are some things that you can do to help better your relationship with a photographer or potentially even build a relationship with a photographer to help get you outstanding pictures of the properties that you're working on? One of the things we like to say is even great staging looks bad with poor quality photos. So, so no matter how good of a stager or a realtor you are in the property that you're presenting, if it's presented and packaged poorly with poor quality photos, that just reflects back on us. And I think it also goes back to the flip side is if you have great pictures of a poor house, you're still showcasing a poor least staged home. And so I think staging and photography as Karen and I know go hand in hand and that's why we love working together. Let's take a look at the big picture and your brand and take a look at a quote from Entrepreneur Magazine. It says, simply put, your brand is your promise to your customer. It tells them what they can expect from your products and services, and it differentiates your offering from that of your competitors. You really need to think about what you're putting out there in terms of social media, how you're representing your staged properties with photos, and what's going to differentiate you and make somebody choose your work over someone else's. Continuing with the big picture and your brand, uh, number one, your work. Your work and you are the subject matter too. When you think about it, the photos that are taken for MLS are not just for selling the real estate. They're also for selling you and your services. In social media, we all know that that's a big deal right now. A lot of people can find your business through social media. That may be the first point of contact that a potential client has to find your business. So your reach through social media is very important in how people are gonna see your business. Your style and aesthetic. That's unique to your brand and your company. Some people focus on modern home staging. Others may be a more rustic industrial or millennials or even a, a boomer set. So knowing what your style and aesthetic is is important for your brand. It's also for, important for the clients that are looking for that particular style and aesthetic. You know, your brand is really going to set you apart from your competition. It's going to help somebody to decide between you or somebody else. So you really need to make sure it's on point. And really it boils down to more work. Your photos, your work, your staging, your the homes that you're selling. It, you want to get more jobs, future jobs. So it really depends on previous work and how you're showcasing that. Your brand recognition is how clients identify you and your company. We're known for our style and aesthetic with unique accessories. Uh, we blend styles from transitional to contemporary to traditional. So how you put yourself out there to the world is going to be known and noticed by your clients. So it's important as you build your brand to have a cohesive style or a way that people can recognize your brand across the various different places that they may come across your company, such as your website, for instance. I know a lot of people, once they go to hire somebody, they may find you in some other avenue, but eventually they're probably going to get to your website. So you want to make sure that you have your brand correctly portrayed on your website with good pictures and, and how your homes are going to come out staged if you're hired to work for the particular client. And again, the world is a stage. Thinking about all the social media platforms from Facebook, Instagram to Twitter, it's a very visual site that you're putting these images on. And from Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, 
you're capturing another audience. There are different markets that are looking at Facebook. There is a different clientele looking at Instagram and the same for Twitter. So it's going to be important when you put your footprint out there, what is the message that you're sending? How is your brand being represented? And truthfully, if they're not being, if you're not being represented with professional quality photos of your work, you're missing out on opportunities for a bigger client base. And especially recently, sites like House, people are, are really gravitating towards our, those sites and whether they're picking out furnishings or uh, homeowners looking for ideas, your business is going to be viewable on another avenue that maybe wasn't just as a couple of years ago. And just kind of piggybacking on what Lance says about House. There are other competitors on House as well, and people are actually selecting who they want to work with from that site in particular. Now, everybody expects their homes to look like they were seen on HGTV. The, the expectation is so much greater now with shows like HGTV and the DIY channel where clients just assume that their home is going to be something out of a lifestyle or shelter magazine. And HGTV is, has helped us but it's also hurt in some respects is that the expectation is so much greater. So even more importantly, to present your brand professionally is key. So how do we take the pictures of our work and put them online to help represent our brand? Well, let's go over some of the free photo editors that both Karen and I like to use to help showcase our work. And first up is going to be PicMonkey. And what we like about PicMonkey is it's extremely easy to make nice collages. You can take a set of photos that um, are at different angles of a particular space or maybe even of different spaces in one house and put them as a single image but as a collage so you can see more with one picture. Great tool for sharing things on social media. Another favorite is Fotor, F-O-T-O-R. That is also wonderful for collages. You can zoom in, zoom out, um, they have special features uh, if you want to upgrade your account. But all of these sites are free and they're easily uploaded to all your social media sites and even your website. You know, another great one is Canva. And again, they also do collages. But one of the great things about Canva is they have like stickers and different designs that you can place on top of your images to kind of spruce them up a little bit. And one of the things that you can also do with Canva is create brochures and it's completely free and easy. So let's take a look at how you would go about creating, let's say a flyer for a property. So if we go to Canva, which is canva.com, C-A-N-V-A.com, you can go and you can create an account and log in and you can select a specific layout and they have a specific group or a category of real estate flyers. Now, one of the cool things about Canva is it's totally free as long as A, you select a free template to use and B, you use your pictures. Canva makes their money off of you buying their stock photography. So as long as you bring in your own pictures, which is what we want anyway, because we want to showcase our own business, then it's 100% free. So if we look here on the left-hand side, we've gone to layouts and we've selected this blue brochure of a for sale um, flyer that we wanna go ahead and put our own pictures into. On the right-hand side, after you have your design selected, you can go ahead and click in the text boxes that they provide you and you can change the information. So in this example, you can see that I put my name, Lance Selgo, at the top and I put Selgo Realty at the bottom with my fake made up website of selgorealty.com. You could obviously change this to match your own business. Then what I did was I went and clicked on uploads on the left hand side and I uploaded my own pictures. You then just simply drag and drop those pictures from the left hand side over into your flyer and then line them up to how you want. The last step is to go ahead and click that download button in the top. You can download it as a PDF and then just save it to your computer and then send that through email, share it online, through Facebook, that type of thing. You can also save it as a JPEG if you want and to be able to share it more easily on sites for social media like Facebook. What's so wonderful too is that you can actually create these for your clients as a home stager to offer this to a realtor, let's say you've worked with and you wanna create a flyer simply for them, even as a thank you gift. Oftentimes they haven't even thought to do this so you presenting them with this opportunity to share this flyer online on their social media sites is a win-win situation for you and your realtor clients. You know, creating images professionally online and sharing that with the world helps you not be like everyone else. Why be cookie cutter? 
I think it's important to share professionally uh, packaged images online. Right here, there's an example of, of two images that I posted online using Canva, uh, simple collages, a simple drop-in uh, text bordered uh, either green with a little dot in it. It's very simple. That's free. I changed the, the fonts for the image for the, uh, the wording there. But I'm being found by clients who see these images and say, I like that style. That fits exactly with the type of home that I'll be listing or the type of home that I'm rehabbing. So my images are actually preceding me before I've even met the client. Your reputation online, again, precedes you. It's a bigger footprint than you can physically make yourself out in your everyday world. Uh, you'll be looked at and seen by many eyes prior to ever calling you. So it's important to have that online reputation be managed properly, present your images professionally, and again, help you get more work. So your reputation is all about getting known for your work, where clients can actually look at something and be like, oh, hey, I know, um, I know who did that. Or even more so, quality and consistency from the standpoint of when a client hires you over and over again, they know exactly what they're gonna get. And, and just remember, good staging looks bad with poor quality photos and vice versa. You wanna make sure that you're representing the product or the service that you're providing in a good light. Reputation allows you to have the key to building a strong client and referral base. Our whole goal is to work with clients, make them happy, provide a great outstanding service so that they turn around and hire us again. It is so much easier to work with clients that we make happy than to try to find new clients. So we want to make sure that we provide a great service from the beginning to be able to have that client for life. And real estate is a referral based business. It is a face-to-face -face people business, but first again, you're going to be seen online. This particular photo is an example of why I have a rule not to share unprofessional photos with my clients. I got a call from a property manager from an apartment com complex, and it was a rental complex in Fort Worth, and she was desperate because she had staged the units herself. Yes, people do stage their own properties, but she staged it for an investor client who owned the building. And when she shared the image with him, the one you see here, this is the one she shared with me that she shared with the builder, the, the investor, he was very unhappy with the quality of the work. So I was called out to do some damage control. And when I got to the unit, I actually was kind of surprised because it really didn't look that bad in person. Now, there were things that needed to be tweaked and changed, but quite honestly, it was the quality of the photos that she shared with her client that really set him over the edge. This is the fine-tuned and staged photo uh, that Lance had taken after uh, I came in and tweaked. Some of the same furniture was kept. We edited out some pieces. But as you can see with the quality of photo, the lighting was so much different. It changed the whole feel and perspective from the online presentation than the previous photo had. And truthfully, it was really the photos in this case that created the problem with that client. This is another example, because not only did we get to do that one particular apartment model, we were called in to do several more for this particular person and, and their client, because they were happy once they saw the photos and we got more work out of it. And truthfully, I didn't think I was ever going to be staging apartment models, but now that's something we've added to our menu of services. Let's go ahead and talk about some photo styling tips. And I think more importantly, taking a look at the details. You know, as a photographer, my goal is to go in and take pictures of a space, but I tend to look more, uh, I, I tend to generalize and I, I, I kind of look at the space as a whole and I don't really see the minor tiny details that Karen has pointed out to me. So I think through working with each other, we've come to an understanding of, I need to be more on lookout for uh, particular instances that can make pictures look better. And also, it kind of goes hand in hand because there are some things that I've helped her out with of maybe putting something somewhere that allows me to hide, for instance, um, like in a mirror or something, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. But let's look and see kind of, you know, with electronics, Karen, what are some of the things that you recommend that we do um, or, or that we have homeowners do to try to prepare for, um, for picture day regarding electronics and cords and stuff like that? I think electronics are some of the biggest banes of my existence when it comes to staging because we all have 
computers. We all need our electronics, our TVs, our equipment for daily living. But when it comes down to selling, most people don't want to see that spaghetti wire uh, hanging out from a, a desk or dangling down from the top of a mantle or, or in a bookcase if you've got your TV uh, positioned in there. So there are some tricks and tips to do, and it, sometimes it's hard to persuade a client to do it, but it's really key to showing, your, again, your best foot forward online for the online presentation in the MLS. And oftentimes it's just trying to hide things or unhook some cables, maybe bundle tie them up behind it just for the day of photos, because not all photographers will Photoshop out uh, wires and things that are almost impossible sometimes to, to remove from the photos. Um, in the first image for the TV, it was hardwired into that, that built-in bookcase, and it makes for a very nice, clean line, which buyers really love. And in the second image with the office, they simply just unhooked the hard drive, took it away from under the desk that day, and unhooked the cords and cables to make for a more efficient, clean line for that particular office. And in the third image, this was a, a client living in the home that had a bunch of books that looked very similar. And in order to hide some of the cords and cables, I suggested that they stack the books up towards the television, lay them down, and kind of hide the wires behind them. So there's some creative ways to hide those cords and cables and just be slightly inconvenienced for an hour um, once the photographer comes in and then go ahead and hook it all back up. One of the things that I like to talk about in terms of blinds and shades and cords is for blinds, I like to tilt them up at like a 45 degree angle or so. And the reason being is because it allows light to come into the space so it doesn't completely close off the window. It still allows you to see that there are blinds actually there, which are a benefit um, for some buyers. But also it prevents the light from coming directly straight at the camera. So by tilting it up at a 45 degree angle, it shoots the light upward instead of downward towards you um, in the space that you're standing. And then the cords and the, the cables that, that you use to adjust those blinds, just make sure those are nice and straight hanging down on the sides and that everything is consistent. So if you have a blind like in this left picture, for example, if let's say the middle one, which I'm sure something was wrong with it where you couldn't lower it all the way, then we take the other two and raise them up so they're all consistent across the board. So it's just a level of consistency to make sure that everything looks nice and neat. And then on the right hand picture, th thinking about cords and plugs, when you have lamps, try to hide the cords, you know, behind the dressers or the, the nightstands, just out of the way of pictures. And a lot of times um, underneath, they'll, a lot of times homeowners will put charging cables for phones and that type of thing. So make sure that they get those out of the way for pictures as well. Believe it or not, bedding sometimes is the hardest thing to help people understand why it's important to make a bed look like a hotel. When a photographer shoots the bed head on, you can really see when the pillows are wonky. Um, they may not be straight. Somebody may have sat or laid on the bed. So it's, it's very important to make sure that everything is pretty well aligned um, that you've got a matched bed set, uh, some matching pillows, or co color coordinating pillows. And it's easy to do if you stand in front of the bed. In fact, sometimes it takes two people to do this. Also, um, back to side tables that are next to it, I want to make a point about the lampshades. Make sure that those are straight as well because uh, the photos capture everything. We actually made a video, Lance and I, on how to make a bed. And it, it, you may be laughing at that because if you're a professional stager and you do this daily and suggest how to do it to, to people, not everybody knows how to make a bed. So we, we used a queen size bed as an example and talked about the steaming the linens, making sure lines are straight, shams and Euro shams and decorative pillows. So a simple video was created to help my clients or anyone really, because you can find it online, how to make a bed, uh, home staging. If you, if you Google search a YouTube video with my name attached to it, it's, um, it's an easy step-by-step -step way to help a client understand the best practice for making a lovely bed for the MLS photos. And, and I think this is something that, you know, you could do yourself as your own business is put together a little small video like this. This is a minute and a half long, just showcasing the various pieces that go into a bed to make it. Uh, and then you can share this with your clients. Uh, so then when you do leave and, and if it's a consultation where they're going to be prepping the home before photos, then you have confidence that they're going to be able to have the tools necessary to reproduce what you have told them to do in order to get the be best photos possible. 
And we talk about that online footprint. Now, the image that we've placed on this, this PowerPoint presentation is a little old, but if you look down on the bottom right, over 45,000 people have viewed this video. With so, no marketing. Exactly. Whatsoever. It's pretty neat. Let's talk about bathrooms for a second because I think this is one of the greatest things that after Karen and I worked together that we figured out one of the coolest things that she could do was to put decor in the bathroom to help spruce it up, but at the same time, put it in a location where it helps me as a photographer take pictures. So if you take pictures of your own stagings, you probably realize that bathrooms are pretty difficult. Uh, they're tight spaces, they're small, and a lot of times in order to get a head-on shot of a vanity, you have to end up being in the mirror. Well, one of the things that you can do is if you put a floral arrangement or some type of decor in the center of that vanity to come up on the mirror a little bit, you can then hide yourself so you're not reflected in the mirror when you take the picture. One of my favorite tips for styling kitchens for the MLS is the tops of cabinets really are not a place for when you're selling your home to showcase collectibles or plants or anything on top. And my rule of thumb is really 18 inches, but I've gotten a bit more brutal, shall we say, as far as what to put up there. And generally, my recommendation is absolutely nothing, especially if the kitchen has been updated with beautiful granite, stainless steel, the backsplash has been done painted cabinetry, your eyes really want to stay on the prize, which is the most expensive part of the kitchen. And it's usually not the stuff that's on top of the kitchen cabinets. I also tell my clients that nothing is better than the wrong thing. And they often don't believe me, but I ask them to take photos before and after uh, when they do take the items down. What is it that your eye is focusing on? When you look in the first picture, yes, it was not professionally taken, but when you look at it, the first thing your eye is really drawn to are, are the things on top of the cabinets, and that's not really where the money is. In the second shot, it's professionally shot. Your eyes are drawn to the stainless steel appliances, the beautiful white cabinetry, the granite. It's the money. It's where we want the eyes of the buyer to focus on. Some more styling tips for kitchens. Um, whether you're doing a builder's model or a high-end spec or even a home that's lived in, engaging photos with some colorful accents on the countertops. Uh, this is one of my go-to favorites, a breadboard with some pretty water bottles and some lemons set up. It's pretty simple. Um, this is more of a, a portfolio shot for myself to kind of showcase with my clients the kind of accessories we may bring into their kitchen. Uh, but, but it's also nice when a, a buyer comes into the home to even have samples of things to offer them from water bottles to cookies. But this is a great image for portfolio work. And it's also good to share with your clients the types of accessories you may be bringing in. And I would also say that this is a pretty engaging photo. I mean, it's meaning that it draws you into the picture. So it's, I think it would get a lot of great interaction from social media for something like Instagram. I think this would be a great photo for that. And here's another few kind of go-to items that we use in most of our kitchen stylings. Some nice greens, um, whether it's real, if you live in the home, like herbs or faux. Ikea has some great faux plants. We usually do two or three of the same type of plant in a cute little container, a basket, um, some fruits or vegetables that are ceramic, some cookbooks. Something, again, just to draw your eye into the kitchen, to kind of imagine yourself cooking there. Um, we don't often set tables, but we do set the, the countertops, especially if it's a higher end property, a model or a spec that a builder may, may ask for. So it doesn't have to take a lot to make it simple and engaging to draw the buyer into the kitchen and imagine themselves actually working in it. You know, one of the things that I like about this picture is going back to the sites that we were telling you about um, or the editors like PicMonkey where you can make these collages is it's nice to be able to have a couple of the squares be wide overall kind of shots of the kitchen and then a couple of the other squares be more tight shots to help draw your eye specific parts of the staging work that you did. So it's a good way to kind of point things out to clients as they're looking at your work. The, the next tips are for family rooms, uh, great rooms. This particular photo is actually an MLS photo shot by another photography company here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And when I saw the image online, I was quite shocked. And I'm sure as a stager, even a realtor if you're watching this, you can see some of the images here that they seem out of place. And it's these small details to me that not all photography companies are created equally. I actually hired Lance to come back and shoot some portfolio work for us for this particular home. 
But this was the actual MLS photo that presented online. And I was really upset with some minor things that could have been improved upon to make the image more, uh, more marketable. The second image here, you can see a very slight change in just straightening out the pillows, brightening up the room, and just being mindful of the small details that really help make the room feel more pleasant, look more presentable from the online marketing standpoint. And I think one of the big issues here was actually that the picture that you're looking at now is how Karen had left it after staging. This first image that ended up being put on MLS was the photographer actually making those adjustments to her staging because they thought that that looked better. So it's it's being mindful to to know that the photographer you're working with is not going to make adjustments to your staging because you left it as is. And also knowing that if the photographer sees something that they think is out of place, that they would reach out to you hopefully and get your opinion before delivering a picture like this to MLS. Sometimes it's just simply moving furniture. And these are both occupied homes. The, the homeowner was living there. And in the first image, the top image, you see uh, a lot of furniture that doesn't necessarily need to be there. And with just speaking with the home seller, helping them understand the online presentation, making the room look better, they were able to remove some of the pieces to make a more aesthetically pleasing image for the MLS. And the second image below, when I look at a photo or I actually walk into a space as a home buyer, I don't like to walk into the back of furniture. So oftentimes I'm, I'm suggesting that furniture that you walk into into a room be removed at minimum for the photo. If it can be removed for showings, even better. I also often recommend removing carpet on carpet. Unless it's a hard surface um, to anchor the space, I generally wanna see the sea of pretty carpet, if it's clean especially, um, in the image from the MLS. All right, let's take a look at some more minor styling tips, but things that I think as a photographer are important. And this will give you an idea of maybe different angles that your photographer may be taking photos of and some of the things that you weren't aware of um, just because you're not used to taking pictures uh, that your photographer might catch in the image that you might not like. So this first one is a lot of times we might shoot over a sofa. And one of the things that I like to do is just adjust the sofa cushions to make sure they all line up correctly. So you can see here that that middle cushion is kind of sticking up out of the way from the bottom of the frame. And if we go to the adjusted result, we can see that I just lowered that down a little bit. So that's something that you can keep in mind of as a stager when staging your properties, but also something to maybe, you know, talk to your photographer and see if that's something that they also may look for when they're taking pictures. Another example is some foreground elements that may be in the way. If you're taking pictures of your work, you're obviously not going to want to shoot right into some type of foreground element. Just because you put something there that looks great in person as you're walking through the space doesn't mean it needs to be there for the picture. So we have to take, in real estate, we have to take a lot of different pictures, different angles of a particular space. So I may want a photo from this angle, but I'm going to remove not only the green plant, but I'm also probably gonna remove that cork board tray that's sitting down on that end table as well. So once we remove that, now we have a good look at the space and really nothing is being taken away because we're not, you know, that piece, that element is not actually part of this particular photo of this angle. So don't be afraid to remove things and also don't be afraid to ask your photographer if that's something that they don't mind doing as well, just to make sure that you get the better, the best picture possible. You know, one of the things that I put together um, that has really helped my business is basically a little short checklist for homeowners to go through prior to photo day. So this is something great that you could put together as a stager and leave it, you know, with your client, with your homeowner, so that they have something to refer back on before picture day when they're actually going through each space and getting it ready for photos. So this particular website is at prepmyhomeforsale.com. And the good thing about this is, is it, it looks great on a computer, but it also works great on your mobile phone. So if a homeowner is going through their property and going into the bathroom and getting ready, they can actually scroll and look on in the section for bathrooms to figure out what they need to do for that particular space. 
in general, it's just a tips, a list of tips that the homeowner can use. So we start off with what are some of the basics, basic things that you do? You know, thoroughly cleaning the house, turning all lamps, all lamps and lights on, replacing out burned light bulbs, things like that, that we want to get this stuff taken care of before picture day. And also these are little tiny things that you might say when you're at a home for a staging consultation but it might be something that the homeowner overlooks and doesn't remember because they're too focused on the big things. So it's nice to have something like this that they can reference later on. Here's an example of what we have in the kitchen, um, just clearing the countertops completely, keeping small appliances to a minimum so it doesn't look cluttered, removing garbage cans, things that people probably use in their everyday lives but we just don't want them in for photography purposes. These tips were actually created uh, through the Real Estate Stag Staging Association, the Dallas chapter. What I did was I went and asked everybody for tips for specific rooms and we put all those in a group. And now I have a page that I can reference and hand out to my clients, which are mostly real estate agents, but then gets trickled down to homeowners. For you as a stager, it'd be great to put something like this together and attach your own branding to it. So everybody constantly sees your name in front of everything and they can get their house ready for picture day. You know, relationships really matter. Again, this is a people oriented business and, and getting to know the people that you work with um, and that work with you is really important. I don't think we mentioned that in the beginning that when Lance and I first met, it was a connection through online social media. We connected on Twitter. Lance had just started his uh, photography business and he was looking to connect with stagers and realtors around the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. And he happened upon, I think it was the RISA. I think it was the Real Estate Staging Association was holding a meeting. And I think you shared that on Twitter. And so I responded and asked if I could come because I thought it was like secret or like that I wasn't invited. Well, he's probably regretted the day ever since that he, he's <laughs> no, <not> come. <laughs> because um, not only myself, but many of the other RISA Dallas stagers and uh, stagers that out, throughout the Metroplex and realtors utilize Lance and his services. And it really just started with that online connection. So really it's important to get to know who you're working with. You know, meet with the person, call a few photographers. If, you, if you've seen online images that you like, find out who's taken those photos and meet with them. Um, invite them to network with you wherever that might be, whether it's a RISA meetup or a BNI meeting or, or a realtor network group. I think it's important to get to know them first. One of my rules of thumb, especially when I refer out my business affiliates, is to hire them. I, I like to vet them and see how they work. So I generally hire them first to work for me. Um, whether the quality is there, um, if there's any improvement that can be made, and, and really get to know them. Because anyone that you refer to me as an extension of your business, and vice versa, it works both ways. Refer your photographer. You know, if you get, if you get to know them and you really like what they do, refer them to your realtor clients. Uh, refer them to your stager friends. Uh, it's important to to build them up and and build them uh, their reputation as well, along with yours, because they again are extension of your business. It's really important to to figure out how the usage of those photos um, are allowed. And again, not all photography companies work the same. So I think it's important that they understand that in order to market your business, you're going to want to share those photos. But how, how is that photo sharing allowed? Uh, don't take for granted that just because they've taken photos for the MLS that you have unlimited usage for them. And Lance is going to talk a little bit more about that uh, as we get further into the presentation. Yeah, you got to remember that every company runs things differently. So the way that I run my company may be a completely different way compared to somebody else, um, one of my competitors. It's no different from two stagers, one stager only doing consultations for occupied homes and somebody who only does vacants or pricing is different or terms and lengths of time are different. You know, we all do what we are most comfortable with. However, I will share with you um, the way that I treat my business and my pictures and how I work and build relationships with stagers and how that benefits both of us, um, both parties. And then maybe you can use that to help um, when you build relationships with photographers in your own area. So back in January of 2016, I received an email from another photographer and they said, I have a question about working with stagers. They have an opportunity to meet with one and they're trying to think of a creative way to partner with them. So they obviously don't want to limit themselves to one stager. 
but they do think that this particular one might bring them a lot of business. They go on to say that they notice that I'm always plugging my stager services, which I do on social media and that type of thing. I'm always tagging and, and you know letting people know when I'm working with people in the local uh, staging chapter. And they're just wanting to make to ask, how does this make sense for both parties? What's a good arrangement that could be mutually beneficial? So do I have any advice? And of course, of course I did. So I responded back and I said this. In return for the stager selling my services and basically being a marketing extension of my business, I give them the photos for free. A lot of times photographers won't do that. Photography is very, um, it's based off of a license licensing model that we'll go over here in the next slide, but a lot of photographers have a problem with giving their photos away for free. For me, I'm not technically giving them away for free because I'm giving them to a stager that a realtor has already paid for those pictures. A realtor has hired me, so I'm giving them to the stager as a thank you for referring me to that particular job. So it's more so a marketing expense is how I look at it, not, not necessarily me giving them away for free. But so anyway, the agent hires me and pays me the usual fee. I give the resulting photos to the stager. It's a win-win because I get paid by the agent and then the stager shares my photos and promotes their business through their show through their social media, on their website. And then the more that they use me, the more photos they have that look great representing their business and it brings them more work, which in turn brings me more work because if they like getting the pictures, then they'll refer me through their agents um, that they're working with to try to get their agents to use me. And that just is a win-win for both sides of the party. Now let's actually talk about how photo ownership works as we close out this presentation, because I want to talk about licensing and usage. The photographer almost always holds ownership rights. Everyone else has a license to use the photos to a certain capacity, meaning the agent, when, when we sell photos to the agent, the agent can use those photos to market that property for a temporary amount of time. We only expect those photos to last for a month or two online because we hope that the house sells quickly and that's how we are able to keep our prices down. If that photo is going to be used to market somebody else's business for an extended period of time, like a stager or um, a builder perhaps, or maybe even an apartment complex where they're gonna be selling a lot more units, there's gonna be a higher cost for that particular photo. Now, as we discussed, I do give away the photos to stagers for free because I think that it's an extension of my business and it helps build me up more business. But I want you to be aware that photographers usually always maintain the ownership rights and they're just giving a license or the approval for somebody else to use them in a certain capacity. So just be aware that when you talk to other photographers and are trying to build up a relationship, that you understand where they're coming from and that they probably aren't used to giving their pictures for somebody else to use. However, once they understand that it's really gonna help build up their business, they may be more inclined to do so. Just wanted to thank you once again. I'm Karen Otto with Homestar Staging. Would love to connect with you online, on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter. My, uh, my social media handle is at Homestar Staging. And again, I'm Lance Selgo, a real estate photographer in the Dallas area. You can reach me at the handle of at Lance UEP. We hope you enjoyed this presentation. Happy staging, happy selling.